Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snedis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our comparisons playlist. In previous videos, we compared between C. anca and P. anca, serum versus plasma, methemoglobinemia versus cyanide versus carbon monoxide, toxicity. We compared between osmolality and osmolarity, Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Monteja fracture versus Gilyatsi fracture, and gout versus pseudogout. Today, it's a topic in reproductive system, the thicker cell versus the granulosa cell. Both of them exist in the ovary. One is going to make an androgen, the other one is going to make an estrogen. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this physiology playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Hypothalamus makes GnRH, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to make the gonadotropins, FSH and LH, which will go to the ovary and tell the ovary to make the female hormones, estrogens and progesterone. And as you know from previous videos, these are sex steroids. They are lipids, lipid soluble, which means they can cross the cell membrane, which is lipid bilayer, and that's why the receptor is inside the cell, usually on the nucleus, and this is a genomic action. The female ovary has thicker cells on the outside. They make androgen in response to LH. The ovary also has granulosa cells, which respond to the follicle-stimulating hormone FSH and convert that androgen into estrogen, namely estradiol, because we're talking about the ovary. If we're talking about the placenta, it's estriol, if we're talking about the breast tissue or adipose tissue, then it's estrone. Estrogen has many functions, including to stimulate oogenesis. Where do we get the estrogens from? From the male hormones, from the androgens, by a process of aromatization. Key enzyme, aromatase. Key gonadotropin stimulant, FSH. Where does that happen? In the granulosa cells. How many estrogens do we have? We have many. We have estradiol, estrone, estriol. Which one is the most potent? Estradiol, also known as E2, followed by estrone. And the least potent of all three is estriol. Why do we call estrone E1 then? Because it's the first one to be made. That's why it's called E1. What does the female ovary secrete? Estrogen, progesterone, inhibin for the negative feedback. Estrogen is made by the ovary. Which part of the ovary? The follicles of the ovary. We talked about the different functions of FSH and LH before. Here are the follicles of the ovary. In the beginning, they mature, they secrete estrogen. At the second half of the cycle, after ovulation, the follicle became luteal body, which secretes progesterone mainly, and some estrogen, and some inhibin. In the first half of the cycle, estrogen will boost the production of GnRH, which increases FSH and LH. In the second half of the cycle, it switches from positive feedback to negative feedback. It's probably because of the dose. Here, estrogen is very high, so it acts as a positive feedback, but here it's a lower amount, that's why it's negative feedback on the GnRH, although the exact reason why it's positive here but negative here is poorly understood. And estrogen will boost the formation of FSH and LH. FSH and LH will grow the follicle, rupture the follicle, etc. Estrogen on the endometrial lining increases the growth of endometrial glands and endometrial blood vessels. On the cervix, estrogen will make thin alkaline mucus. Why does it have to be thin? To facilitate the entry of the sperm into the uterus and then into the fallopian tube where the sperm meets the secondary oocyte. While estrogen made the mucus alkaline in the cervix, in the vaginal canal, however, estrogen produces tons of glycogen, which gets metabolized into lactic acid. Do you remember glycolysis? Lactic acid is an acid, it will create an acidic pH in the vagina, which is a good thing because it kills bacteria. Here is the difference between thicker cell and granulosa cell again. Do you know what the word thicka means? It means near the wall. If you understood this diagram, you'll have no trouble understanding the pathogenesis of polycystic ovary syndrome. If you would like to learn about polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, 
as well as ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, vulvar cancer, breast cancer, preeclampsia, eclampsia, peripartum cardiomyopathy, gestational diabetes, acute fatty liver disease of pregnancy, and much more. Download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Today we talked about the natural estrogens. How about the artificial synthetic estrogens used in pharmacology? How about the anti-estrogens? How about selective estrogen receptor modulators and selective estrogen receptor degraders? You can learn more about them by downloading my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button, choose the highest tier to get access to 300 premium videos right here on YouTube. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, including the notes used in the video that you're watching right now. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.